jacket. Where can Maria be? Where's Maria? Maria! 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 Maria!
I think I should talk to Maria instead of about her. I am grateful to you all. Ave! Come here, my child. Stand up, Maria. I want to talk to you. Yes, I know about last night. Reverend Mother, I was on my knees most of the night because I was late. And after you'd been so kind and given me permission to leave. It wasn't about your being late, Maria. I must have awakened half of the abbey before Sister Margareta heard me and opened the gate. Maria, very few of us were asleep. We could only think that you had lost your way and to be lost at night on that mountain. But Mother, I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work, and I'd hear them singing on their way to Vespers. Many times, I'd come back up that mountain, singing all the way, and that brings up another transgression. <laughs> I was singing yesterday, and I was singing without your permission. Maria, it's only here in the Abbey that there is a rule about singing. I know, but that's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta is always reminding me, but too late, after I started singing. In the day you were singing in the garden, at the top of your voice. But mother, it's that kind of song. I came to the window, and when you saw me, you stopped. Yes, that's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a child, and I can't quite remember. Please? Even then. Maria, it seems to be the will of God that you leave us. Leave? Leave here? No, Reverend Mother, please don't make me do that. Please. This is what I want. This is my life. But are you ready for it? Perhaps if you go out into the world again for a time, you will return to us knowing what we expect of you and that we do expect. I know what you expect, Mother, and I'll do it. I promise. Maria, if it is God's will, where am I to go? There's a family, a family of seven children. You like children. You're very good with them. They need a governess until September. Until September? Captain Von Trapp expects you this afternoon. He's a fine man and a brave one. He was given the Maria Theresa Medal by the Emperor. It was for heroism in the Adriatic. A captain in the navy? Oh, mother, he'll be very strict. So we're not being sent to his battleship. God bless you, Maria. Reverend Mother, am I given you permission to sing? Yes, my child. I have confidence in confidence alone. I have been given permission to sing. You see, I have caught 
Yes, sir. I was calling the housekeeper and she did not answer. Do you know why? Sometimes she isn't here, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I was answering the telephone. Good day, sir. We are happy to have you home again. Why did the last governess leave? Who knows? She just said, I've had enough of this and walked out. Was Louisa playing tricks? Putting toads in her bed? She didn't complain of that, sir. Well, there's another one coming tonight, and this one can't walk out. Oh? She's coming from Nonberg Abbey, with orders to stay until September. I hope you'll be at home for a time, sir. Just until tomorrow. The telephone call, was it for me? No, sir. It was for Franz. Before you arrived, there was a call from Vienna. A Frau Schrader. I have the number in the pantry. I know the number. Oh, and I shall be back in about a month with some guests. Yes, sir. Do you know how many, sir? Just two. Herr Detweiler. Ah, Herr Detweiler. And Frau Schrader. The telephone call, was it for me? It was the post office. They have a telegram. It will be delivered at 7 o'clock. That gives me five hours to be nervous. With that scatterbrained boy delivering telegrams? Well, that's one thing people are saying. If the Germans did take over Austria, we'd have efficiency. Don't let the captain hear you say that. He didn't whistle for us when his wife was alive. He's being the captain of a ship again. I can't bear being whistled for. It's humiliating. In the Imperial Navy, the bosun always whistled for us. But I wasn't in the Imperial Navy. You will wait here. I am Captain Von Trapp. You are Fraulein? Maria. Maria Rainer. Now, Fraulein, as for your... Would you mind stepping over there? Before the children meet you, you will put on another dress. I haven't any other dress. When we enter the Abbey, all of our worldly clothes are given to the poor. What about this one? The poor didn't want this one. <laughs> this is what you would call a worldly dress? belong to our last postulant. I would have made myself a dress if I had given time. I can make my own clothes. Good. I'll see that you're given some material today if possible. Now, you are in charge of my children. There are seven of them. You will find out how far they have progressed in their studies and carry on from there. Each morning will be spent in the classroom. Each afternoon they march. You will see that at all times they conduct themselves with orderliness and decorum. The first rule of this house is discipline. Yes, sir. This is your new Fraulein, Fraulein Maria. As I sound your signal, you will step forward and repeat your name. You, Fraulein, will listen and learn their signals so you can call them when you want them. Liesel! Friedrich! Louisa! Kurt! Brigitte! And this is Gretel. Now, let's see how well you listen. Well, I won't have to whistle for them, Reverend Captain. What I mean is I'll be with them all of the time. Not on all occasions. This is a large house and a large estate. They've been taught to come only when they hear their signal. Now, when I want you, this is what you'll hear. 
You won't have to trouble, sir, because I couldn't answer to a whistle. That's nonsense. Everyone in this house answers to a whistle. I'll show you. Yes, sir? This is my orderly, my butler, the new governess, Fraulein Maria. Yes, sir? This is the executive officer, Frau Schmidt, the housekeeper, Fraulein Maria. Please be sure her room is ready. Yes, sir. Yes, sir? And this is Ursula, our maid. She watches the children between governesses. Well, I shall now leave you with the children. You are in command. Pardon me, sir. I don't know how to address you. You will call me Captain. Thank you, Captain. I forgot to return this whistle, Captain. I won't need it, Captain. Well, now that it's just us, would you mind telling me your names again and telling me how old you are? Now you're... I'm Liesel. I'm 16 years old, and I don't need a governess. I'm glad you told me. We'll just be friends. I'm Friedrich. I'm 14 years old, and I'm impossible. <laughs> really? <laughs> Who told you that? Fraulein Josephine, four governesses ago. I'm Brigitte. You didn't tell me how old you are, Louisa. I'm Brigitte. She's Louisa. She's 13 years old, and you're smart. I'm nine, and I think you're just the ugliest one I ever saw. Brigida, you mustn't say a thing like that. Why not? Don't you think it's ugly? If I did think so, I wouldn't say so. I'm Kurt. I'm 11. Almost. That's a nice age to be, 11. Almost. I'm Marta. I'm going to be seven on Tuesday. I like a pink parasol. Pink is my favorite color, too. And you're Gretel. And you're five. I'm going to tell you something. I've never been a governess before. Where do I start? You mean you don't know anything about being governess? Oh, no. Well, the first thing you have to do is to tell father to mind his own business. No, Louisa, don't. I like her. What's in here? My guitar. What'd you bring this for? For when we all sing together. We don't sing. Of course you sing. Everybody sings. What songs do you know? We don't know any songs. You don't? No. no. Well, now I know where to start. I'm going to teach you how to sing. Thank you. 
these tools in our heads, we can sing millions of tunes. How? By mixing them up. Listen. So do the fa mi do re. Now you do it. So do the fa mi do re. So do the ti do re do. So do la ti do re do. Now let's put it together. So. Good night, Rolf. Liesl? Yes? 
You don't have to say goodnight, Miss Early, just because your father's home. How did you know my father was home? Oh, I have a way of knowing things. Oh, you're wonderful. Oh, no, I am not. Really? Oh, yes, you are. I mean, how did you know two days ago that you'd be here at just this time tonight with a telegram for Franz? Every year on this date, he always gets a birthday telegram from his sister. You see? You are wonderful. Can I come again tomorrow night? Rolf, you can't be sure you're going to have a telegram to deliver here tomorrow night. I could come here by mistake. But the telegram from Colonel Schneider, he's here from Berlin. He's staying with the Gauleiter, but I... Nobody's supposed to know he's here. Don't tell your father. Why not? Well, your father's pretty, well, Austrian. We are all Austrian. Some people think we ought to be German. They're pretty mad at those who don't think so. They're getting ready to, well, let's hope your father doesn't get into any trouble. Don't worry about father. He was decorated for bravery. I know. The only one I worry about is his daughter. Me? Why? Well, how old are you, Liesel? Sixteen. What's wrong with that? You wait, little girl, on an empty stage for fate to turn the lights on. Your life, little girl, is an empty page that men will want to write on. To write on. You are 16 going on 17 baby it's time to think better beware be can eat and careful baby you're on the brink you are 16 going on 17 fellows will fall in line figure your lads and boys and cats
going to Vienna tomorrow. I have this material he ordered for a new dress for you. Oh, nice of him. Even before it's made, this is the prettiest dress I've ever had. I hope the captain will like it because I want to ask him for more material. More? No, not for me. For the children. For play clothes. The bone trap children never play. The captain doesn't like them to get dirty. But they're children. They have to climb trees, roll on the grass, think of all the rocks and The captain and says the best exercise is marching. The children will continue to march. I hope you find your room comfortable. Yes, thank you. There will be new curtains for the window and the alcove. They will be hung tomorrow. Well, but these curtains are very good. There will be new curtains. Will the captain be way long? I don't know. Of course he has to come home every time he hires a new governess. I sometimes think the children get rid of their governesses just so they can see their father. Well, he must want to see them too. Since his wife died, they remind him too much of her. You can put that away. You won't be using it. Why not? The captain won't have music here. He won't have music? And he used to love music. There were wonderful evenings here. His wife would sing and he would play the violin or guitar, but now he shut all that out of his life. Ugh. So that's why he is the way that he is. But to not have music, well that's wrong for him and wrong for the children too. It will work out. The captain may marry again before the summer is over. That would change everything. They'd have a mother again. It's going to rain. You'd better close your window. Dear God, I know now that you've sent me here on a mission. I must help these children to love their new mother and help prepare them to win her love so that she will never want them to leave her. And I hope that this will be a happy family in thy sight. God bless the captain, Liesel, Brigitta, Louisa, Marta, and little Gretel. Oh, and I forgot that one boy. What's his name? Well, God bless what's his name. God bless Mother Abbess, Sister Margareta, and everyone at Nonberg Abbey. And now, dear God, about Liesel. Help Liesel to understand that I'm her friend and help her to tell me what she's up to. Are you going to tell on me? Help me to be understanding so that I may guide her in her footsteps. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I was out taking a walk and someone locked the doors earlier than usual and I didn't want to wake everybody up. So when I saw your window open, you're not going to tell Father, are you? Did you climb that trellis all the way to get up here? That's how we always got into this room to play tricks on the governesses. Louisa can climb it with a toad in her hand. Were you out walking all by yourself? You know, if we clean that dress out tonight, nobody would notice this tomorrow. And then all of this would be just between you and me. Here, put this on. You can take that dress and put it to soak in the bathtub. Then you can come sit here on the bed and we can have a little talk. I told you today that I didn't need a governess. Well, maybe I do. <laughs> oh, Greg, it's you. You aren't afraid of a thunderstorm, are you? <laughs> you just stay right here with me. Now all we have to do is wait for the others. They're asleep. They're not scared. <gasps> wait for me! Oh no, look! Come, all of you, up on the bed. Now all we have to do is wait for the boys. We won't see them. Boys are brave. You boys weren't frightened, were you? Oh no, we just wanted to make sure you weren't. Friedrich, was this your idea? Oh no, it was Kurt's. <gasps> Kurt! That's it! That's the one I left out! God bless Kurt! Why did it do that? Well, 
The lightning says something to the thunder, so the thunder answers it back. I wish it wouldn't answer so loud. Maybe. If we all sing loud enough, we won't hear the thunder. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles and warm woven mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudels, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles. Tell Herr Detweiler we're having coffee out here. Yes, sir. Herr Detweiler is still on the telephone. Oh, thank you. No sign of the children, Franz. Not yet, sir. Georg, those mountains, they are magnificent. Yes, they're not like any other mountains. They're friendly. 
In that green stretch of woods over there, when the wind moves through it, it's like a restless sea. And that sweet little village. That's not a village, that's a town. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt its feelings. It's fun being with you. You're quite an experience for me. You're quite an experience for me, too. Somewhere in there, there's a fascinating man. Occasionally, I catch a glimpse of him, and when I do, he's exciting. Exciting? I've never been called exciting before. I'm beginning to understand you better now that I see you here. You know, you're a little like those mountains. Except that you keep moving. How can you be away from this place as much as you are? Maybe I've been searching for a reason to come back here to stay. Georg, I like it here very much. Max still can't be on the telephone. I know he's desperate about getting... You like it here? Oh, we'd have to spend some time in Vienna. I have Heinrich's estate to look after. I thought that was a corporation now. It is, and I'm president. You? President of a corporation? After all, I managed Heinrich's affairs for years before he died. I just can't see you sitting behind a desk. Well, of course. I wear a business suit and smoke a big cigar. Excuse me, Captain. I did why I would like his coffee. While he's telephoning. He's just finished. I'm sorry I took so long. Any luck? How would you like this for the Kaltzberg Festival? The finest curl group in Austria, the greatest mixed quartet in Europe, and the best soprano in the world. Max, it's something I'd love to hear. So would I. All I've got up to now is a basso who isn't even profunda. Max, you always come up with a good festival concert. And why? Because my motto is, never start out looking for the people you wind up getting. That's why I've been telephoning Paris, Rome, Stockholm, London. On Georg's telephone? How else could I afford it? Why am I up here? I hoped it was because you liked me. Of course I like you. Why shouldn't I like you? You live like a king. You have an excellent wine. Cellar. Max. I like rich people. I like the way they live. I like the way I live when I'm with them. Speaking as a government official, it is... Georg, is there a cathedral around here? That's our abbey, Nomberg Abbey. Do they have a choir? A beautiful one. Good. In the next few days, I'll have to visit all these towns and listen to the Sanger Boone's choirs, quartets. You'll be here for the meals, won't you? Oh, yes. It was in a town just about that size, Botsman, where I discovered the St. Ignatius Boys Choir. In 1930, they won the festival, became very famous, toured all over the world. Oh, yes. Whatever became of them. By the time their voices changed, they were rich enough to live in America. Who lives in that dilapidated castle? Rumpelstiltskin? Baron Elberfeld, the oldest family in the valley. I'd like to meet him. I'd like to meet all your friends. Georg, why don't you give a dinner for me while I'm here? Nothing very much. Just something lavish. I wouldn't know whom to invite. Today it's difficult to tell who's a friend and who's an enemy. This isn't a good time to make enemies. Let's make some friends. I can't understand what's happened to the children. You're not worried about them, are you? They should have been here to meet you. It couldn't have been an intentional slight because they haven't met me yet. Forgive me, I'll try to find them. Have you made it Georg's mind yet? Is he going to marry you? He hasn't admitted it yet. There seems to be something standing in his way. You don't know what it is, do you? No. I do. What? It's very simple. It's money. Money? Yes. He's rich. You're rich. In all the famous love affairs, the lovers had to struggle. Here are dreams away upstairs, the lovers starve and snuggle. Their famous for misfortune, which they seem to have no fear of. While lovers who are very rich, you very seldom hear of. Not a sign of them anywhere. No little shack does he show. Oh, okay.
seen my children wearing old curtains? Oh yes, they've become very popular. Everyone smiles at them. I don't wonder. They say, there go Captain Von Trapp's children. My children have always been a credit to my name. But Captain, they weren't. They were just unhappy little marching machines. I don't care to hear from you about my children. Well, you must hear it from someone. You're not home long enough I to said know I said I don't want to. I know you don't, but you've got to. Take Liesel. Liesel isn't a child anymore, and if you keep treating her as one, Captain, well, you're going to have a mutiny on your hands. And Friedrich, Friedrich's afraid to be himself. He's shy, he's aloof. Friedrich needs you, he needs your confidence. Don't tell me about my son. 
But Gita could tell you about him. She could tell you a lot more if you got to know her because she notices things. And she always tells the truth, especially when you don't want to hear it. And Kurt is sensitive. He's easily hurt and you brush him to the side the way to do all of them. I haven't finished yet. Louisa wants to have a good time. You've just got to let her have a good time. And Marta, well, I don't know about yet, but someone has to find out about her. And little Gretel, oh, Captain, she just wants to be loved. Oh, please, Captain, love Gretel, love all of them, they need you. Stop! Stop it! You will pack your things and return to the Abbey as soon as you can. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said those things. Well, not the way I said them. After you've gone,
be lots of parties here. Where did you get nice to sneak out and walk up from the top of the stairs? I remember the music. Once your father brought a gypsy orchestra all the way from Budapest. Yes, they wore red coats. I remember beautiful ladies and everybody laughing. There was one lady, the most beautiful of all. I think she was here all the time.
frustrated. I hope you're feeling better, frustrated. Thank you. Sure to be a success. I'm here. Max. Elsa, without a doubt, the most beautiful corporation president in the entire world. Thank you, Max. Max, you're back. And as usual, just in time for dinner. Georg, did you think you could throw a gala without me? Oh dear, now we have an odd man. A little odd, but charming. <laughs> Liesel, run out of Frau Schmidt to set two more places. And I want to see Fraulein Maria. Two places? We'll need another woman. Who? Liesel? Oh no, she's much too young. I'll ask Maria. You can't be serious. But of course. She's a nursemaid. I don't think of her that way. I don't mind, but your friends, you can't ask them to dine with her. Why not? Elsa, tell him why not. Max, can you change in a hurry? Yes, Max, we can use you tonight. Frustrator! They're talking about you out there. Come on, Georg, I've been dodging these people for an hour. Were they talking to your father? Good evening, Frau Maria. Good evening, Herr Detweiler. It's nice to see you again. Yes, you're going to. I knew it all along. Frustrator didn't have a headache. She just wanted to get out of the party. She wants 50. Now, Brigitte, no, you shouldn't say things that you don't know are true. But I do know. I heard her say to father that she'd been dodging these people. That doesn't mean she didn't have a headache. It's very important that you children like Frau Schrader. I like her all right. Why is it important? Well, I think she's going to be your new mother. Oh, Fraulein, Brother's never going to marry her. Why, he couldn't. Why couldn't he? Because he is in love with you. Now, Brigitte, that's just the sort you of thing. You must know that. No, Brigitte, no. Remember the other night we were all sitting on the floor singing the Edelweiss song that he taught us? After we finished, we laughed at him for forgetting the words. He didn't forget the words. He just stopped singing to look at you. And when he speaks to no, you, the way... No. And the way you looked at him just now when you were dancing. You are in love with him. One more dance, Fred, and then to bed. Oh, Fraulein Maria, you won't be putting the children to bed tonight. You'll be having dinner down here with us. Oh, yes, it's all been arranged. You'll have to hurry and change. Oh, and Maria, wear that dress you wore the other night when we were all singing. It was lovely, soft and white. Excuse me, Captain, shall I announce dinner? Oh, no, not yet. The children will want to say goodnight. Georg, I wanted the children to say goodnight the way they did last night. No, Elsa, not here. Please, Georg, the way they did it for me, it was so sweet. No, not in front of strangers. Please, Georg, for me. Presto changer! Max, you're just in time. Children, now. There's a sad sort of clanging from the clock in the hall, and the bells in the steeple, too. And up in the nursery, an absurd little bird is popping out to say,
taste my first champagne? Yes? No. all over Austria for something like this for the festival, and I find it here. Wait a minute, Max. A singing group of seven children in one family? Max, Georg didn't even want them to sing in front of the guests tonight. I had to persuade him. Ah, so you have influence. Max. Elsa, you must talk to him. It's for Austria. And it wouldn't do me any harm. Bless you, my daughter. Sisters, take our new postulant to the robing room. Ave! Maria's waiting. I know it's taken her a long time. I waited until she wanted to come to me. It's strange. Very strange. She's happy to be here, but she's unhappy too. Very unhappy. Why did they send her back? No idea. Do you know? No idea. She doesn't speak. Only in prayer. I shall see her. Maria? Reverend Mother. Has it taught you anything? It's taught me that I never want to leave these walls ever again. Why did they send you back to us? They didn't send me back. I left. I left without any warning, without even saying goodbye. Stand up, Maria. Maria, what happened? Why did you do this? I was frightened. Frightened? I was confused. I felt well, I've never felt that way before. But then I knew I couldn't stay. I knew that here I would be safe. Maria, our Abbey is not to be used as an escape. What is it you can't face? I can't face him again. Him? 
Thank you, Sister Margareta. <laughs> Maria, are you in love with Captain Von Trapp? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me about it, my child. Well, Brigitte said that I was, and that her father was in love with me. And then we were both dancing. And we were both looking at each other. When I could hardly breathe. But then I knew I couldn't stay. But you do like him, Maria. Oh, yes. Did you let him see how you felt? If I did, I didn't know that I did. That's what's been torturing me. I was there on God's errand. To have asked for the captain's love would have been wrong. I don't know. I do know this. I am ready at this very moment to take my vows. Maria, the love of two people is holy too. You have a great capacity to love. What you must find out is how does God want you to spend your love? I've pledged my life in God's service. I've pledged my life to God. My daughter, if you love this man, it doesn't mean that you love God less. You must find out. You must go back. Leave? Leave here? No, Reverend Mother, please don't make me do that. Please, let me stay here. These walls were not made to shut out problems. You have to face them. You have to find the life you were born to live. How do I find it? Look for it.